Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Inhaler99. I'm a little pissed off right now because I just did this, which took 30 minutes uh, speaking about this topic, and I have to redo the whole thing. Never try to upload or capture a video straight from YouTube. I don't know, for some reason it doesn't work with mine, and I just know I'll learn that out. So, in honor of my name, I'm having a cigarette. It's not a 99, but hey, it's a filter. Anyway, the topic was religion and how um, religion um, is impacting my life because it is relevant and it's something I really want to talk about and that I've been looking into a lot. So I figured it'd be good for me to get it out there. And it's a good, good vlog too. Religion, drugs, uh, politics. Good three topics to bring up, you know, I guess, to get, a, get the ball rolling. Okay. Um... Oh, I hit the mute button real quick. <laughs> um, my religion I, I grew up as um, was a, a Jehovah Witness. Uh, now, I'm 21 right now. And uh, I uh, stopped considering myself one when I was 15. Now the whole story. Please don't cancel. <laughs> okay, um, so okay, I was, I was born into it. Um, my mother was one. Uh, my dad was one. Um, from his mother, he got it from his mother, which and my mother and my mom got it from um, God. I guess her her great grandparents. So definitely been there for a while. And uh, I guess how it, it's impacted me. So let's see. Um, I've always had a, a strong yearning for um, the truth, which is you know what the witnesses call um, the religion. And I always wanted to please God. I was always the more um, emotional kid growing up. I'm the youngest of four. And um, I always thought it's because I grew up on soy. And I still drink soy because I'm lactose intolerant. You know, because you know, they say soy produces estrogen. But uh, I later found out that uh, when a mother has more children, uh, she produces more estrogen. Which, you know, the more children she has, the more likely she's... Uh, the more likely she is able to um, birth a, a gay child. Um, but I'm not gay myself. No, it's just I guess it's just who I am. More in touch with my feminine side. Whatever. Anyway, um, because what, what I mean by that is um. Okay, so I grew up as as one, and I remember going to the meetings. And when I was about like five. I remember bringing a remote control to the Kingdom Hall because I wanted to fast forward through the, <laughs> the services because I was that bored, bored with them because I never wanted to do it, you know. I had to um, do it Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays, plus do um, assemblies, plus do conventions and assemblies are for two days, uh, Friday and Saturday, I think it's like twice a year. And uh, for eight hours a day, and then conventions are once a year, but three days, you know, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, for eight hours every day. Which I was living in Northern California at the time, so I had to go to the Cal Palace in San Francisco, and then go do it down there, and not get to explore anything in San Fran. Just do that. Oh, I got to go to Chinatown. That's right. That was the height of the trip. I get those little get those little poppers you, you throw on the ground. That was awesome. Um. So anyway. Um, I believed in the uh, the truth a lot um, growing up, to the extent where, uh, as far as demons go, witnesses are very big on on demons, and uh, what a child might fear, a typical fear would be like the boogeyman, you know, um, you know something under the bed, you know, in the closet. I just associated that with demons, which for some reason for me seemed like fucking you know ten times worse. Because they seem so physically harming, which I guess in a way it's just like the boogeyman. But I guess because God's associated with it, they seem a little worse in a way. Um, for example, I believe this because I had a few instances that happened to me. Um, I remember when I was a little kid. Like, I even do this now sometimes. <laughs> like, um, like now, like when I'm listening to music in the dark in my bed, and, you know, I have to prop uh, pillows up like this, and then I'll rock. You know, with the music, 
you know, or um, if I'm in a car and I'm not driving, I rock because if I don't, I get motion sickness. Well, I did that too as a child. And, um, but I'd be laying down on my bed, you know, face, face, you know, facing the bed, and then I'll hit my head, mm, just gently, you know, rocking myself to sleep. I don't know why. Me and my, me and my older brother do that. And I guess we get that from our grandfather, so. But he's a millionaire, so I guess hopefully get that as well. Um, so anyway, I, anyway, me and my brother, um, he's three years older than me, so him and I were, you know, really close growing up. And, uh, we had bunk beds. And, uh, I was on the bottom bunk, and he wasn't in the room, I forget exactly where he was, but, you know, I had to go to bed. Yeah, obviously... I had an earlier uh, bed schedule than him. So I was rocking myself to sleep anyway, I got tired and then I you know, I just uh, laid my head down and I, I was closing my eyes. And then we had those types of beds, those bunk beds where they had the metal bars underneath the bed. And then I heard this sound as if someone was dragging their hand underneath the bed and went like that. And it started living the fuck out of me. And then it started like banging my head, you know, rocking vigorously because I figured like that was that was the reason why because it was too quiet um, that was the reason why and um, something I, <clears throat> there's a lot of good accounts I heard growing up you know in the kingdom hall with like Ouija boards and demons and stuff like that like any like I heard a couple stories then any time a brother has come across like a Ouija board all he said was God's name which is Jehovah and the Ouija board would flip the fuck out you know and, and fly against the wall and break like that's I guess that's how you you know you cast a demon out of your house, whatever it is, just to say God's name. So I remember, like, banging my head, like, like Jehovah, Jesus, please, you know, Almighty God, you know, and then I started singing um, a song, uh, a Jehovah Witness song, you know, like, look for the day when you'll say, life without end, that last, you know, and I kept it, and then pretty, pretty soon I, I was banging my head so hard, and you know, I passed down, and stuff like that, you know, like, in shadow figures, you know, I would see, you know, just, it was dark, you know, my, my imagination just imagination was just running wild and uh you know stuff like that always made me like believe that you know uh, the, the house was haunted which you know like later in life you know like till I was, when I was like 19 I brought it up again to my brother Jimmy and I said uh hey you know isn't it funny that only you and I were the only ones who like shared um those experiences and nobody else in the entire family did I forget exactly what the word is it's a French word but it's where you have like a, you share the same um delusion or a uh, hallucination kind of thing. I think that's pretty much exactly what it was. And um, because I used to believe in it so strong that I thought even just like mentioning the words like exorcist or like Rosemary's baby would um, you know um, would invite demons into your household. That's how much I used to believe it. Like he, he even brought the home of this game called Diablo. And that was like the holy fucking grail you know of Satan I thought. And uh, I remember like going and crying to my mom, be like, "Yeah, I said, no, oh, I got it. You know, it's gonna like kill us all." <laughs> and uh, it was pretty bad. Also, with growing up too, you know, I was never allowed to hang out with ki people who are not who are worldly, which that means they're they're not witnesses. Which is interesting because our neighbors, um, they were the exact same age as my sister, older sister, and my oldest brother. Um, yet, you know, they were allowed to hang out with them whenever they wanted to. That was perfectly fine. Um, and also, too, uh, my neighbors, uh, their mother was my babysitter for after school. Because um, my bus stop was right in front of my house, and then, you know, after school, I had to wait, like, two hours until my mom, you know, got back home. So I'd go over to their house, you know, and and um, chill out. But, yeah, my friend, my friend, you know, from back in elementary school, you know, who lived, like, seven houses, seven houses down, I was never allowed to hang out with him. That was forbidden. Or my friend who lived like two blocks down. And not because, you know, they're bad people. It's like, they're kids. You know, like, the, our neighbor, their dad smoked. So did my friend. Like, you know, uh, his dad smoked as well. I never really understood that. And uh, I always got, I, I always got uh, put down when I asked if I could hang out with them outside of school. Which was weird, you know. It's like, I never really thought about it until a uh, a little while, but I mean, that like destroys the kid really. I mean, uh, socially, I didn't really develop the social skills that you know a child you know needs to, that is vital uh, during that time. And um, 
even even till now, you know, I still have those uh, issues too with um, uh, with uh, socializing sometimes. And uh, so you know, that, there's that aspect also too that I follow along in that same category as dating. Um, can never date. So anytime like a girl would like me and get a hold of my number, I had to like explain to them like, oh, he my my mom says I can't date, you know, because I'm a joke witness. My mom like hang up that phone, you know, and stuff. I'm like, oh, <laughs> it was super embarrassing and just really dumb.